All right, so, uh, welcome back to another comic review, but this one's a little different, in that this did not come from the haul Mount Vernon Kin sent me. This is a comic from, I got, uh, this is a comic I got from a free comic book day. It was a discount book, um, and I thought it'd be kind of fun. I'm always uh, down for these kind of stories, and that is Doctor Who, The Four Doctors. So, as you can see from the, uh, from the cover... It's a multi-doctor story, and I'm always down for multi-doctor stories, and we have doctors 10 through 12 um, for this. This is from this is not from the IDW line, this is from BBC's uh, Titan Books, and Titan Comics, excuse me. And essentially, these were the guy, Titan was the comics uh, group that took over after IDW lost the uh, rights. So this book was one of their first big events with, uh, with Doctor Who. And this was also coming up, as you can tell from the costume, I don't know if you can, but you can definitely tell from the sonic screwdriver, is that this was meant to be a, um, a, uh, a comic that is, uh, that is meant to hype up the, uh, um, Peter Capaldi's Doctor, who at the time, this was, I think, his first season, because we do have Clara in here as well as, um, as the companion, and a bit of context, we do not have the Pawns or any of Tenant's era uh, companions from the show. They're, these were the comic exclusive uh, companions for the Doctors, uh, for Doctors 10 and 11. Now, the story begins, you may be thinking, well, who's the fourth Doctor? We'll get to that. It, the title's a little misleading. Like, for, for a story called The Four Doctors, it really should have been called Three and a Half Doctors. But that didn't sound right. So, in this story... Um, what has happened is that um, the th um, doctors 10 through 12 have been brought together in Paris and have more or less uh, discovered that there's been a trap set for them by this unknown um, being who leads a group called the Vrood. The Vrood are basically symbiotes. They're, they're literally just symbiotes. Essentially what they are is like techno-organic life forms that are slimy and they bond with another person. It's literally the symbiotes. Now, what's interesting is that this is written by some Doctor Who pedigree, in that it's written by Paul Cornell. Now, Paul Cornell may be, may be a name you've heard of before, because he's written his fair share of comics, namely from DC. He did a... Um, I've always wanted to read this, but I've read bits and pieces of it. He wrote a amazing Lex Luthor story in action comics that involved him trying to get the Orange Lantern ring again, and it involved him going on this wild adventure through the DC universe, where... He encounters Grodd and gets attacked by Grodd with a giant spoon. He fights Deathstroke. He even meets Death from The Endless. So that's a comic I've always wanted to read. Paul Cornell has also had his hand in Doct not only Doctor Who comics, but also Doctor Who TV shows. He wrote an amazing story. He's written at several episodes in the Russell T. Davies era. So to have him on here is a bit of pedigree on here. So... It's interesting to note, like I said, that this is a Doctor Who comic that is centered around the three, uh, these three Doctors. And the story is about them dealing with, this, with the Vrood and also going through alternate timelines, which also kind of bothered me at the same time, because basically we go through this, like, the, they get zapped into it, like, alternate timelines where... Um, what happens is they see, like, what-ifs. Like, they see, like, a bunch of what-ifs, like, um... It almost becomes, like, uh... Like, alternate Doctor Who stories in their own right. Like, we have one where David... Where the Tenth Doctor lets, um... Donna's grandfather die. Instead of him, he lets him die. Then you have another one where... Uh, Matt, uh, where the Eleventh Doctor just accepts his fate after being assassinated by River Song and just time just ends in on itself. Remember that whole thing? Yeah, that was what well, that totally wasn't convoluted at all. But then again, you could apply that to every doc uh, to every Doctor Who story. And then we get to um the 12th Doctor who's become uh, his alternate timeline is set where he's become lonely and insane after Clara betrayed him sometime in the future. Um obviously remind uh, um reminiscent of uh of uh, the go to hell storyline, if you guys remember that for Clara, that's when the Clara hype train was really coming off the rails, and people were like, uh, "We're done here. We're we're done. We're done. We're done." Now, 
like I said, this is all about mainly like hyping up the Twelfth Doctor because at the time of this review of this release, the uh, Capaldi's Doctor was the new hotness, and it is set, he is the focal point of this book. What also Paul Cornell is really good at, other than bringing back the Reapers, which he did create in his um, Ninth Doctor story, was um, was this gr was also um, really getting the dialogue of all the characters. He is he was really good at in this comic of uh getting all the characters vo dialogue. Now um what I mean by that is like when I'm reading Capaldi's um Capaldi's dialogue I can hear Peter Capaldi. When I hear Matt Smith, I can almost hear Matt Smith and same for David Tennant's doctor. So it is a lot of, it is a credit to Cornell's work that he can write dialogue for all the doctors, and even though they're all the same character, he gives them all their own respective voices, which I think is a very uh which gives you a, a like it's a perfect example of how good he is um as a writer. And I feel underrated. I feel pretty underrated. To be fair, there, Cornell did write that... I think he also wrote... No, that was Chibnall. Chibnall wrote that god-awful Torchwood episode where we have the half-naked cyberwoman fighting a pterodactyl. Yeah, that was a thing. Should have been our first warning <laughs> about not letting Chibnall be the uh, showrunner, but all right, should we were all fooled. I like this. I like uh, um, Chris uh, Mount Vernon Kid did give me two other comics that are from Titan Doctor Who comics that are from Titan that are centered around the Eleventh Doctor. So this was my first time reading anything from Titan. Honestly, this was my first time reading any Doctor Who book from Titan. So I'm glad it was a story that was a multi Doctor story because I'm I'm a simp for multi Doctor stories. There is, like, a cringeworthy joke in here, though, where the Twelfth Doctor bursts and he's like, Oh, look at us, we're gonna have a multi-doctor cosmic event. He literally says that, and I went, mm, I felt secondhand cringe on that one. But, yeah, I do think the end, the villain is like, oh, that's a nice twist. I don't want to spoil it, it's not who you think it is. It's not, it's not who you think it is. It's not the Master, it's not another, it is a Time Lord, but it's not who you think it is. Um, I think the story wraps up a little more convoluted, but then again, like I said, you could literally apply that to every Doctor Who story ever. And, yeah. It's, I think this is a good one. I think this is a nice, if you just want to read, if you don't want to, like, read too deep into it, it the only thing that you're going to uh, get confused about is uh, 10 and 11's comic uh, exclusive companions, Gabby and Alice, who are really good. I like them. I, I really enjoyed them. But it also brings up a point of like, okay, so if the Tenth Doctor let um, let Donna's grandfather die in this timeline, does that mean this Doctor, the Tenth Doctor, has like, are we just basically dealing with this version of the Doctor where he's just running around and resisting the like he's been holding back the regeneration into Eleven this whole time? I don't get it. That's what bothered me. Is like. That just opened. I thought it. I thought this. These stories with the tenth Doctor were all about his time when he left Donna behind and just went solo for a while. Anyway, but there you go, guys. If you were a Doctor Who fan, check out the Four Doctors. And yeah, uh, there was a lot of fun. False, a little bit of false advertising, but what can you do? But other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. Um, and other than that, if you haven't already, hit the link below. Head on over to my Patreon for exclusive content. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.